from the station that's on your side. This is Channel 7 News. It should be like four or five. Welcome back to Good Morning Arkansas. We have Dr. Laura Wilson of the Sherwood Family Medical Center to talk about wheezing this morning because wheezing apparently is a common thing this time of the year, but it has different causes right, of it, right? Right, it's the season. We say the state fair is a peak of wheezing. So is it like, really? Yeah, it's kind of... It's not because of the state fair, no, though, Well, right? I don't know. It could be, but <laughs> no, not really. It's the season, right? The fall triggers, and we right. start to see viral processes as well. So what would wheezing exactly be? Right, so first we want to talk kind of about asthma, and I think everybody's pretty familiar with asthma. What could asthma present like? One, recurrent wheezing. Everybody would know that one. Wheezing is actually from inflammation in the airways, and it's air trapping, and you can't get the air out, so it causes an expiratory type sound. Right. So recurrent wheezing, chronic cough, this would be potentially um, at night. Asthma kids tend to cough a lot at night. Exercise induced symptoms and could be triggered in the fall and spring. Not all kids are triggered by um, allergens, but a lot are. And so we tend to think of the fall allergens as being a big trigger for asthma type wheezing. We're talking about ragweed and things like yes. that. What are some of the other things floating around that the causes The pollens, the ragweeds, the molds, really, oh. they're all seasonal. It depends on what plant blooms when, right. but right, in the spring and fall, it's kind of similar mixes of different types of plants, right? right? Treatment for asthma, of course, everybody knows about an albuterol, albuterol inhaler. That's your rescue inhaler. That's just for as needed here or there. You also might consider taking some antihistamines, Zyrtex, and Claritins. Those are not, of course, going to treat directly the wheezing, but might reduce your allergen triggers, so then you could have less wheezing. If you do have chronic asthma symptoms, then you might be on a daily preventative inhaler, and if you have a really bad flare, you would take around oral steroids. And so again, I think most people are pretty familiar with those type treatments, but I wanted to compare it to the other type of fall wheezing that we see, and that's bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis, it's a big long word. Say it, come on, right. 10 times fast. Right. Right. A lot of syllables in there. But that is inflammation of the bronchioles or the lower airways. And commonly we think of that being caused by RSV, and a lot of people are familiar with that, but there's other viruses that can do the same thing. This will usually present in infants and toddlers, typically in fall and in early winter with wheezing, lots of nasal drainage and cough, and maybe some fevers because this is infectious, right? So different than the fall allergy triggers. You can't treat this with the allergy medication. Right, and so that's kind of what I wanted to kind of point out to everybody is that although the symptoms are very similar, guess what? None of the asthma treatments have been proven to treat bronchiolitis. And there have been so many studies. You know, some years we'll think we come up with something, it's the new big thing, and then the studies kind of fizzle out and show none of it really helped. And so inhalers, antibiotics, steroids, antihistamines, none of those have been proven to have any effect in bronchiolitis. So what do you do? It's really a bummer diagnosis. It's supportive care. So what does that mean? Saline up the nose, suction, Tylenol or ibuprofen if the child has a fever is uncomfortable. This is viral, right? This is viral, right? So you right. can't treat it with antibiotics. Exactly. Antibiotics don't help and none of the inhalers help. Even though they're wheezing, just like asthma, the inhalers don't help. And so, like I said, it's kind of this bummer diagnosis. These kids, these families come in and this child is really sick with this bad cold with wheezing. And I tell them, all right, keep doing what you're doing. But when do you worry? If they develop respiratory distress, right? So if you have a child that's got lots of nasal drainage and cough and they're wheezing a little bit, but they're smiling at you, they're still drinking, that's just kind of try and manage it at home. But if a child gets into more trouble, they're gonna have what's called retractions. And that's where they're tugging below the ribs, between the ribs, maybe some nasal flaring. And that's a sign that things are getting a little bit more severe and the child might actually need oxygen. The other thing that deserves an emergent eval would be signs of dehydration. So the things that get kids admitted for bronchiolitis, one, a need for oxygen or respiratory distress, two, dehydration or a need for IV fluids. The hospital has no magic medicine for these babies, but they can provide oxygen and fluids until this thing ultimately runs its course. All right, I'm going to get out of the, the, the uh, wheezing part of this and throw you a little curveball, probably uh -oh. not for you though, but flu. Yes. That's coming up too. I think it's September. I look at the calendar. I'm thinking flu season. Is flu shots right. now? Yes, and we've actually had a couple <clears throat> positives at the clinic. Really? Which Already? I, I don't mean to scare everybody. I think it's kind of sporadic. I don't think it's really flu, but kind of is an eye opener when we've had two positives in the past couple of weeks. Is the of vaccine weeks. available now? The vaccine is available. Most um, pharmacies and clinics, I think the health department should be having it. Um, at our clinic, we have it currently, and so it's time.
crazy. Yeah, I always think of October, but then I guess right. some people get a little bit right. sooner it, than that. It is a little early-ish, but the CDC says it's really never too early. And so if this is a convenient time, I say go for it. If you're not in a rush, it could probably wait two to four weeks, unless we really are about to start seeing some flu, which again, I kind of doubt, but with those couple positives, it makes me a little It a takes little a couple of weeks for your immune system right. to get. How long does that last, the vaccine? We think about four to six months. Four to six months. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you so much. We have Dr. Laura Wilson here with the Sherwood Family Medical Clinic, and thank you so much for coming sure. on the show. Your information is on the screen, and uh, thank you so much again for sharing your knowledge with us on this Thursday morning. Thanks for having All me. Right.